Ever wondered how to create a mesmerizing audio-visual experience that blends cutting-edge video game technology with live music production? Well, you're in for a treat. In this video, I'll take you behind the scenes of my latest project, a reactive visualizer set in a surreal liminal space pool room powered by Unreal Engine and Ableton Live. So get ready to dive into the world of real-time 3D graphics, minimalist classical music, and the magic that happens when they dance together. Whether you're a seasoned developer, a music producer, or just curious about the process, stick around and by the end of this walkthrough, you'll have the knowledge to create your own immersive audio-visual masterpiece. To begin, when building a room such as this, there are a few main variables required in order to help create the aesthetic that's commonly associated with liminal space pool rooms. The first being, the tiled walls and floors is commonly seen in such environments. The second being related props, such as pool ladders, plants and vases, inflatable rings, beach chairs, ceiling lights, etc. Really, whatever additional assets you feel would be appropriate with such a location. These are just a few of the particular objects I use to help make the environment feel less barren. Then finally, the still and or gently moving water that inhabits the pool room environment. Some additional caustics is done via gobos, also helps with getting the refraction in the water to be as lifelike and accurate as possible without your computer having to do too much intensive rendering work. Which is very important in this use case, as everything should ideally work in real time for this type of reactive visualizer. With these things in mind, the first step I took was blocking out the environment using the customizable pool room pack that I bought off the Epic Marketplace. This little kit bashing pack allowed me to very quickly get the desired aesthetic up and running while also supplying all the necessary variables such as walls, floors, tunnels, stairs, poolside ladders, and more to work with. So with these assets at my disposal, I started creating an environment that had several rooms connected via tunnels that the camera could travel along with the camera rig rail. This time around, I opted to have the environment start with one long straight stretch that would eventually make a right turn and then start going through a maze of additional mini pool rooms and corridors. These pool rooms and hallways were all inhabited with ceiling lights, vertical floor lights, and recessed primitive shape lights built into the walls. The idea was to keep the reactive lights simple and more congruous with the environment especially as the lights would reflect off the water, creating more complex visual patterns that would reflect all around the environment. Which brings me to the next important variable in creating the pool room, that being the water itself. The water was created using the stock water plugin in Unreal Engine, which currently has to be enabled in every new project as the plugin is currently still in beta. The type of water in this particular video is rather calm, so it's not too complex to get set up, thankfully. I'll leave a link in the description to some other useful tutorials so you can get this set up as well, as me explaining it in this video would make things far too long. I also use some gobos to help achieve the caustics in the water, not only for efficiency's sake, but also to add another variable to the water to make it more lifelike, as the stock water plugin doesn't really replicate the caustics look I was hoping to achieve. I'll leave a link to another helpful tutorial that I used to help achieve this effect, as this too would take far too long to cover in this video alone. The last water-related variable was setting up the inflatable pool floaties and beach balls so it could float and interact with the water. I wanted to add this so at least some of the props in the video would feel congruous with the environmental variables. Generally speaking, this was achieved by building blueprints for each of the props that would then have a buoyancy component inside it, as well as enabling the simulate physics button on the object itself, setting the collision presets to custom, selecting the overlap option, and then finally, entering in the relevant pontoons information back in the buoyancy tab, as determined by the dimensions of the object you wish to have float. I'll be sure to include a more detailed tutorial of this process as well in the description if you happen to be interested in a more thorough explanation. 
With the visual variables sorted out and set up, the next step is getting the song and sound design created to help further solidify the chill vibes I was hoping to achieve with the piece. When it comes to the music, I created that in Ableton Live with the Childhood Home Piano preset and three Max for Live Markov chain sequencers, all quantized to the F minor pentatonic scale. This sequencing technique allowed me to get a very loose and flowing improvisational piano part that could go on for as long as I wanted it to without ever it repeating itself. As the statistical odds of each of the three Markov chain sequencers generating the same pattern again would be incredibly low. This sort of idea can be heard in the music of groups like Autechre, but I wanted to approach it with a minimalist classical perspective instead, as I thought it would fit the pool room aesthetic better than electronic music. From here, each of the three pianos received a Max for Live device that would convert the MIDI data into OSC data, which could be then sent to Unreal via my computer's port and IP address for the purpose of triggering all the lights I had placed within the environment. I did this to help make the lighting in the environment not only synchronistic with the music, but also dynamic as the lights being triggered would also be constantly in flux in terms of its location. There's also a side-chained reverb pad that I had mapped out with OSC PAR to create a few lights that would swell with the music as well. I added this to help break up the monotony of every light just being a triggered strobe. With all of the lights set up with the music, the next step was building out a rig rail for the cine camera actor to follow along in the environment. This was needed as I wanted the camera to twist and turn through the various hallways and rooms I had built, which is far easier to do with the rig rail as opposed to manually animating the camera with the sequencer, as once you build your desired track, all you have to do is parent the camera to the rail system, and you're good to control the camera's movement with the slider that goes from 0 to 1. From here, it comes down to recording the final output in real time via OBS, which is far less time consuming compared to making pre-rendered visuals in Blender, Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, or any other 3D software package. This ideally would allow you to use Unreal Engine at concerts or other live events with the ability to freely improvise with the visuals on screen, just as the Markov chain sequencers freely improvise the music and lighting patterns for this particular piece. And there you have it, the complete walkthrough of how I created this reactive visualizer using Unreal Engine and Ableton Live. I hope this tutorial has inspired you to experiment with your own audiovisual projects. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more tutorials on Unreal Engine projects, music production, and more. It really helps the channel grow and means a lot. Got questions or ideas for future videos? Be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.